Hi everyone, Peter Carlos here with your acting tip for the day. Frank Langella, what an amazing actor. You all know him, you've all seen him in films. He's one of these actors that's always appeared somewhere. Never necessarily the leading man, but he had a massive career in theater. He appeared in uh, Dracula, he appeared in Frost Nixon, he appeared as Salieri in Amadeus, and I would have loved to have seen that performance because I could just imagine him, imagine him in it. An amazing guy, absolute, the knowledge that this man has for plays, most of you don't even know the authors of these plays. He knows everyone, he can quote you plays, he's done Shakespeare, and he's one of these actors that's managed to sustain a career for close to 40 years. Listen to what he says about script notes. Listen to what he says about hard work. Pay attention to this guy. Acting is the truth. It's um, it's something you're you're not aware of it. You're, you're never aware of good acting. It just is. You you're you only feel as if you're watching something that is real and honest and somehow connected to you. To me, real genius is somebody who does something that connects to a universal feeling and you just go, yes, that's what I feel. Yes, that's what I think. Yeah. And that's good acting, good music, good writing, good anything. It's, it makes no fuss about itself. We're here at the W Hotel in Westwood, Los Angeles to talk with Franklin Jella. And Franklin Jella is a wonderful actor with a wide range of experience from all kinds of Broadway shows and all kinds of movies. And he has a very unique approach to almost everything. And I think it's going to be fascinating to hear what he has to say about acting. I don't like the word clever when used about acting. It's often used a lot in British acting. That's a very clever actor. And I instantly don't like to see cleverness. Or I don't like to be aware that someone's good with language or someone's good with emotion or someone's good. I just like to let the actor make me feel something. The first thing I think is, can I play this? I don't want to take on a part I don't think I can play. And then once I decide I can play this, then I think I can't play this. After I've committed to it, that's a, a very interesting dynamic that happens to me. And then I go into a kind of wilderness for a very long time, a very uh, safe wilderness because I've done it for so for so long. I, I know I'm going to be in this kind of yes. non-place where I can't speak, I can't move. Did, did I ever pick up this thing and say this and then say, oh, come in, and, you know, all the stuff that's, that's so natural to you by the time a show is over. But at the first rehearsal, you think, oh, I can't do that. I can't make these moves and do this and stuff. So I, I think I actually put myself into that wilderness. I just put myself there because it rids me of any preconceived notion of, oh, I know how I'm going to do this. I know what the result will be. I know where to get this laugh. I know when to make them cry or whatever. I just, I make myself feel as if I'm in some open white space and I have nothing but my being and the text. I was doing a play once where my character had to come on with a burst of tremendous energy the first moment of the play. He had to shout down to the maid that she was making a lot of noise. And I, and I tried it a million different ways. You know, I came in one way uh, shouting, I came in another quietly seething, I slammed the door, came down the steps, I didn't go down the steps. And then, and then I suddenly thought, why don't I say the line from behind the door? Why don't I not say the line in front of the audience? Why don't I just scream at the top of my lungs as if I just woke up in bed? And that gave me a whole wonderful feeling of freedom to myself that when I did come through the door, I was already full of the, of the impression I wanted to make on the line. It's a little thing, but it's, and it was an accident. I think I have a really clear idea about this guy. I don't think I would have necessarily answered this when I was younger. Inspiration comes from hard work. It comes from down in the gutter, nuts and bolts work. I have to learn these lines. I have to own them. I have to know exactly what I'm saying. I have to know what the words mean. And I have to relentlessly drill the technical sides that have nothing to do with inspiration, nothing to do with 
waiting for the muse to hit me or waiting for the moment to come. The moment comes when I am so in charge of all the technical elements and so free of worrying about them. So I'm not thinking, what is the next line? Do I have it exactly right? I'm not thinking about where my hand on the doorknob is supposed to go. All those things have been kind of worked out. It sounds contradictory to what I said before, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. It's If you work out all that stuff, then you have this extraordinary ability to fly in any direction you want to go because you're not, a piece of your brain isn't thinking about something as basic as the glass or the door. I think actors shouldn't depend upon directors. Really great directors are like really great actors. You're not aware you're being directed. I mean, the best directors give the least amount of notes. If any actor really wants to think about, you know, how do I find the emotion in something, all he has to do is watch a, 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 a real person in an interview who suddenly is asked a question about something that means a lot to them, and that person will go with no warning and no, um, no setup, that person will burst into tears or burst into laughter. Actors tend to warn you that they're going to do something inspired, like, you know, great tears or great emotion. They tend to set it up in advance, and that isn't the way humans work. You know, we're overwhelmed by it. I've never written in a script in my life, except to put down somebody's phone number. You know, but I've never, no, I don't. I think the minute it goes from this and this and this into on my hand and on a piece of paper, it's worthless to me. I don't, I don't mark my script or write in it or, I just don't, don't. I, somehow it's funny. It's like a blank piece of paper. Yeah, it is. It's just the words. You know? I always think if I, if something happens that's good in rehearsal my visceral self will remember it. And if my visceral self doesn't remember it, it isn't worth keeping. I never have bought the cliche that the camera doesn't lie. The camera lies like a bandit. The camera can make you... First of all, the very fact that you're on the camera is already something in your favor. The fact that it has singled you out and is looking at you cuts you selects out. It. it selects it. Selective, and you can, in fact, if you have a great camera face or an interesting offbeat quality, it can be regarded as talent. It's not. It's not talent. It's, it, you know, all the years and years and years of people imitating Brando. Yeah. People would say, I want to I want to act like Brando. Mm -hmm. And the point is, nobody can behave like Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando's behavior, apart from his skills as an actor, his behavior is so unique to himself that you can imitate his style as much as you want. You're never going to be that. You're never going to be the essence of Marlon Brando. He can sit in front of a camera and captivate you in a way that someone else can't. Part of that isn't even Brando's talent. It's his aura. It's his, and sometimes, and his yeah, and his looks and his phenomenal uh, magnetism. So you could find somebody who has all of that magnetism and aura, who has no talent, and they could also become a movie star. Bones. You know, movie stars have great bones. They have faces that you want to look at over and over again. They comfort you, they excite you, they make you want to sleep with them, they make you want to talk to them, they want you want to be their best friend or their lover. That's a movie star to me. I would advise any actor who wants to act to understand that if he doesn't wake up in the middle of the night with the desire to do it as powerful and as strong and as overwhelming as it might be when he's doing it in front of an audience, he shouldn't do it. because. You have to want to act with every fiber of your being. You just have to. You can't approach it like a job, which I know is the practical thing to say. And you can't approach it like, um, oh, I'll just do this to get girls, or I'll do this to make money, or I'll do this to become famous. Real acting has to be so much uh, an essential for your being. And then if you if you figure out that you that you want to you want to act that much, 
but you have to do it, then I would say once you start, never give up and never give in. I think words are king. I, I think the words are where it's at. I don't I don't like I don't like I don't like behavior that's either against, off of, or in spite of the words. I I can appreciate the fact that there are human there's human body language and the things you do and the way you sigh or wait or listen that are terribly interesting to watch. But to me, if anybody takes words and beats them down in favor of behavior, they're not good actors. Because the the words to me are like the notes that Pavarotti sings. They're, it's as valuable to an actor to have great words to say as it is for Pavarotti to have great notes to sing or for Casals to have great notes to play or Van Cliburn or any of the great you know artists. It's... To me, it's an escape to say, fight the words, go against the words, play play off of them. It's more interesting to watch what I do around this and then say my line. It isn't. At least it isn't for me as an audience. That was Frank Langella. Hope you enjoy him. Keep an eye out. He will appear in many, many more films. And thank you for listening. Hope you subscribe. See you again next time. Take care.